Super Mario RPG is a black sheep in the Mario franchise. It's one of the few titles to mix characters from Mario 2 with those from mainline games. It's a collaboration between Square and Nintendo, featuring Final Fantasy battle mechanics alongside Nintendo-style platforming. Also, it's one of the few major early Mario releases with a score by someone other than Koji Kondo, but you probably wouldn't guess that based on the soundtrack. The composer Yoko Shimomura of Kingdom Hearts fame does an amazing job arranging, adapting, and extending Kondo's music, sometimes showing off properties his tunes have that even he never explored. What's more, her original tunes for the game are stellar and manage to bring fresh flavor to the franchise all while sounding distinctly Mario. I'm ProcoCat, welcome to VG Amazing, my series on video game music appreciation. Shimomura's arranging talents are on full display in Super Mario RPG. Arranging in music is the adaptation of pre-existing music to new circumstances. An arranger might reorchestrate, edit, extend, or even add new material to the original. For an example, let's listen to what Shimomura does with the athletic theme from Super Mario World. First, for context, here's Kondo's original. Shimomura adapts this tune for a heartwarming moment in Super Mario RPG where Mario's entertaining one of his young fans. What was originally a piece for solo piano now includes marimba, plucked strings, percussion, trombones, and the most flatulent tuba you ever did hear. The high contrast orchestration and slower tempo reflect the fantastical game of pretend Mario's playing with Gaz, as well as the low stakes. Mario's not platforming for his life in this scene. It's easy to miss, but Shimomura appends an original intro to this tune, a hint of Gino's theme. Gino, a puppet-turned-party member, will come to life Pinocchio-style in the next scene, so this is some charming foreshadowing. We hear a slightly more advanced bit of arranging when we visit Mario's pad. This track might seem to be a straightforward adaptation of Mario's theme, but Shimomura has cleverly worked up an original accompaniment cribbed from a totally different Mario tune, the first world map theme for Mario 3. Who knew these two ideas could fit together so well? In her music for the Pipe Vault mini dungeon, Shimomura takes one of Kondo's most modest tunes and makes a full-fledged piece out of it. The subject is the underground music from the original Super Mario Bros, a simple monophonic composition. Shimomura treats the first half of this line in canon, having three voices enter playing it one at a time, creating many layers. Before the loop, we hear both halves of the tune simultaneously. She split the tune into its component parts and freely combines them, giving rise to new counterpoint. Super Mario RPG has a big soundtrack, and actually very few pieces in it arrange or adapt pre-existing Mario material. Even so, Shimomura succeeds in making the soundtrack sound distinctly Mario by applying Kondo's orchestration tricks to her original material. Like in Kondo's music for Super Mario World, we hear detuned pianos, marimbas, steel drums, brass, and flutes. Shimomura isn't slavishly tied to Kondo's work, though. There are many tracks where she lets her own style dominate, and we get to appreciate her unique cocktail of influences. Mid-game antagonist Booster's theme is a great example, straight out of surf rock with a growling melody instrument not unlike Norm Knowles' sax on Comanche by the Rebels. You might also recognize this tune from a particularly disturbing scene in Pulp Fiction. That's where it became famous. We hear classical stylings appear in her work a number of times, notably in the music for Nimbus Castle while it's under the rule of usurper Valentina. The contrapuntal harpsichord music, complete with Valentina's haughty laughter, evokes our snobby, pompous villain. 
Classical music, especially Baroque harpsichord music, has long been associated with out-of-touch elitists with big egos. Baroque flavor of a different kind is audible in Shimomura's music for Smithy, the game's main antagonist. Organ being associated with nefarious characters is a trope as old as pre Hays Code horror films, and we hear a couple lines in his music tease Box, Takata, and Fugue in D minor. This trope is so established that in just two years, another Nintendo antagonist would straight up play the organ before your confrontation. We can't talk about Spithy without listening to the music of his Weapons Factory, probably my favorite track in the whole game. Its meter's on the technical side, perfect for this industrial setting, with 13 unlucky beats to the bar. The percussion really makes this track pop, with trap-style snare bursts and anvil strikes. What a perfect way to create musical anticipation for Smithy. Our party can hear his evil hammer striking from deep within the factory, producing even more weapons. I've already mentioned Gino's theme, but let's circle back around to it. When I was a kid playing this game, I always thought this little tune was Twinkle Twinkle Little Star. Turns out it's not, and I was stupid because kids are dumb, but there is a resemblance. Both tunes use twice repeated notes and have a very similar shape where they start high and slowly descend. I can't help but wonder if this was intentional on Shimamura's part. A children's tune about stars is the perfect inspiration for the theme of a kid's toy come to life by way of a star being that protects wishes and dreams. Super Mario RPG's ending sequence is such a delight, and Shimomura spared no effort in creating a complex compositional send-off for this great cast. It's a medley, returning to several themes heard throughout the game, including the themes of Mushroom Kingdom, Monstro Town, Major Bosses, and of course, Gino. That's not all, though. During the parade sequence, Shimomura exposes a totally new theme that works in counterpoint with both the Mushroom Kingdom theme as well as Gino's theme. Speaking from experience, writing invertible counterpoint like this is difficult. Shimamura is demonstrating monster technique and musically rewarding us for powering through to the conclusion. The embarrassment of earworms and melodies heard in combination are the perfect musical fireworks to end this incredible game. I hope you enjoyed this discussion of the soundtrack to Super Mario RPG and just how many skills Shimamura puts on display in it. She's described composing this soundtrack as the turning point of her career, and I can see why. She'd later go on to continue collaborations with both Nintendo and Square, now Square Enix, composing for games in the Mario and Luigi series, Mana series, and Kingdom Hearts series. This ended up being something of a composer spotlight, which is maybe something I'll do again in the future. Who's your favorite video game composer? Let me know in the comments below! I personally would have a hard time deciding, but it's probably between Yasunori Mitsuda and Hitoshi Sakamoto. If you enjoyed the video, please give it a like! If you'd like to see more in the future, consider subscribing. You can follow me on Twitter at ProcoCat for updates and to hear some of the music I write. Thanks for watching.